You need better knowledge graph for your rack. In this video, I'll show you the different options you have to construct knowledge graphs. What are the important things to consider? You also realize why knowledge graph is important for both human beings and LLM systems. And I made a knowledge graph powered rack system as a mini recommendation assistant to help me get prepared for Data Day Texas 2024. So the reason why I did this project is because I want to know more about the speakers and what they'll talk about. But if you go to the official website, there are over 50 speakers in this one-day conference, which means a lot of the keynote sessions will be overlapping. Every speaker has their unique expertise and experience, and it's going to be tough to decide which to go to because it's probably not possible to be physically present at multiple spaces at the same time. Well, you probably could, but not me. That's why I need an assistant to help me organize information. To get started, I'm especially interested in the speaker section, and I'll be using DiffBot to help me extract this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wow, the output is pretty neat and tidy. It only takes a couple seconds. So now I have the text data of every speaker. I'm going to download it. This is the CSV file downloaded from the bot and we'll especially focus on the text from the summary column because we'll be using this text to generate knowledge graphs. We have the data loaded and let's see what it looks like. This is the text corresponding to Dr. Claire Sullivan. To construct a knowledge graph based on the text data that we have, I'm going to use Slingchain's DiffBot Graph Transformer. So here's the code. They have this full documentation. Example from Langchain is getting text data from Wikipedia Loader. But in our case, we already have the text straight from the website. This code wouldn't be applicable because this will return a document type of variable. But we already have text strings. So I'm going to reference the source code to find out alternatives. And this is the source code. Worth noting here is the various functions. One is convert to graph documents. And the variable to be passed in is a document type. In our case, we will need this. NLP request. This is a string type. This looks relevant. Process text response payload document. Let's go back into the source code and see what it's doing. Basically, this returns the entities and relationships extracted from the text data. The following line is transforming entities and relationships into a graph document so they can further get loaded into our Neo4j database. The two functions here will be helpful for us. This is essentially this text data. As you see here, it's being passed to NLP request. And let's see what it looks like. You can see here that entities are being extracted, such as the name of the person, organizations, industry, skills, field of work. For the knowledge graph construction process, I think what's really unique about this bot is it actually assigns a confidence degree to the fact with the corresponding evidence that the model finds in the text, as you can see here. Now we got the result from this NLP request function, which is a dictionary type. Originally, I want to pass this directly into the next function, which is process response. But here's the problem. This requires a document type of variable, which we don't have here. As I mentioned previously, in our case, we don't have any document type of data, and we don't really need this either because we already have the text data. So it looks like a little bit of modification is needed. And let me show you that in one second. Since the library is already well written, only made some small adjustments, like removing the requirements for document type and source, you can find a code in my GitHub repo. I can now use this process response function by including only one variable. Document type data is no longer needed. If I run this, I will successfully get my graph document where you'll be able to see the nodes and relationships that would be further included in our Neo4j database. Now we're ready to load everything into our database. So let's see what it looks like. Let's just pick some samples here. How about let's look at another example with shorter text. Here we have a smaller knowledge graph. Amy Hodler. Amy is an evangelist for graph analytics, network science, responsible AI, yep. graph analytics, network science, and where's science history? Oh, okay, so here it is. So I would say this knowledge graph pretty much captures what Amy's passionate about. You can really tell the information from all unstructured text data is being transformed into a graph where it's easier to spot the different topics and even the relationship. Looks like Sean and Amy share a common interest in network science. 
That's where you see the value of knowledge graph, where it helps us as human beings to draw the connections between different people, topics, and this information is originally from the sea of text data. Originally, I planned to compare the entity extraction outcomes from both this bot and GPT-4. However, look at my bill from December. That's the bill I had to pay for on making a knowledge graph around the open AI drama for my previous video. Since I'm already satisfied with the knowledge graph that I got from this bot, I don't feel like spending another 10 to 20 bucks testing out. So sorry folks. As I already tried GPT-4 before, let me just show you what the outcome looks like. It's obvious there's already a lot of mistakes here, such as Sam Altman is apparently not a product, WeWork is not a person, and Microsoft 2 is not even a valid entity. Since this whole video is about knowledge graph, how about let's find out who are the experts in graph analytics. So here we got Amy Hotler. There's also a graph interface where it shows the entities and relationships. Let's ask another question. This is a data science conference. I'm curious how many speakers are there with expertise in computer science? Who are the experts in computer science? This knowledge graph shows us the professionals that either have their work or interest in computer science. Unfortunately, the text here is a little bit overlapped, but you get the idea. Knowledge graph is really to give you that visualized experience of processing information. Our next question, let us ask the system about Michelle E. It's pretty nice. You see a little overlap here, but it's okay. We can go to the back end to fact check and see whether it's doing its job bearing the database. This pretty much aligns what we saw here, right? Michelle has failed a work in machine learning, cloud computing, and diversity. That's correct. There are two relationships. That's why we're seeing the overlap here, but you get the point. So this is our AI assistant where I can just do Q&A with my knowledge graph. That's where you see how LLM referenced the ground truth before giving you answer and that's also where you see the power of knowledge graph where you clearly see the path of information retrieval which is different from our experience or challenges with hallucination let's say chat gpt i want to make it clear that i'm not trying to tell you which model will always be better than the other besides i haven't done it in a scientific approach so i don't have enough evidence to support any particular conclusion however one important message i do want to get across in this video is the growing importance of benchmark setting fact checking and evaluation for more advanced Gen AI applications. For building graph powered LLM apps, so far from what I experienced, DevBot seems to have a more complete system as it provides transparency about where it retrieves the information and how it validates the information with evidence found in the data. To me, that adds a lot of credibility, and I believe for people building Gen AI applications, having credible and reliable information is a crucial feature for Gen AI product development. That's pretty much it for the video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and until next time.